Hey, Philosopher here, and today we're talking Shadowland. Amazing team that you're going to want to build uh, as soon as you're able to do so. We're going to talk today about the T4 abilities. We're going to talk about the gear priority. We're going to talk about the ISO classes, and I'm going to teach you how you want to use this team. So why am I so focused on Shadowlands? Well, I will tell you, after building a 500k Shadowland team myself, uh, I am convinced that on my War Offense tier list, that Shadowlands is the number two War Offense tier list, it, War Offense uh, team in the game, right under Black Order. And in fact, I almost put Shadowlands number one. So why was I so focused on having uh, Shadowlands high on this list? Well, look at this th this matchup right here. This is Shadowlands facing Doom and RTA, and I've played hundreds of RTA matches with this team. They just take out Doom before he even takes a turn. And in war, if the Doom is so big that you can't get through him, either because he's obviously G15 and more stars than this one, or he's got that med bay or barracks buff, well, don't worry because White Tiger special ability blocks him for two turns and she'll be able to use that special on Doom before he takes a turn. This is a team that's amazing at shutting down Doom. It's also amazing at shutting down other teams. And you may have seen our video already in this channel, which I'll also link below, showcasing an actual war win I had, about 120k punch up in a recent war, where I used my Shadowlands team to attack a team with a G15 7 red star long shot uh, buffed with med barracks and med bay as well as a G14 Captain Marvel and others. Easy win. Literally the, the other team didn't even get a turn basically and they were just completely annihilated by Shadowlands. This is an amazing team. It's a team you want to build as soon as you have the gear and the ability to do so. And I've got kind of a different view on this team than, some, than you might have heard elsewhere. And that's why I really have put out this infographic and want to do it. So let me go through the infographic, which is also linked below. So I've go through the priority orders and the T4s here, which we're going to talk about in a minute. One thing you may notice is that I uh, have fewer T4s listed here than some other content creators. And that, I think, comes from the way in which I put this chart together. So I came up with my own initial ideas. I discussed it with my Twitch chat stream, which that's also linked in the in the description below. But then I also talked to players who had built up 600k Shadowland teams and had been using them in war, using them in RTA and so forth, and got their feedback and their rankings and their priorities as to T4s. Then I built the team myself and I used it in war. I used it in RTA, I used it in PvP, in Arena, and so forth. And I've tested out the team extensively. And I really believe that with just these eight T4s, you can get this team online. And the best thing is, you're going to want Night Nurse to have these T4s for the Doom Raid anyway for the skill nodes. So really, this is a team that is more economical in terms of T4s to build than you might otherwise believe. So let me go through. I'm going to start with the T4 order, and we're going to walk through this team one by one and what the essential T4s are going to be. Okay, so let, here's the Shadowlands team. And when you go to Shadowlands, one thing I will just say is the key to the Shadowlands team is you want to have a big white tiger. Why? She is the one who's going to do the majority of the killing on the team. She's an amazing damager. She's going to move before anyone else gets a turn. And she is going to potentially just kill the key enemy right from the outset and cripple the opposing team. She also has the most essential, the most important T4 on the entire team, which is her passive. Okay, her, What her passive does is her passive uh, on spawn fills the speed bar for 10% plus 5% speed bar for Shadowlands Ally for self and all Shadowlands allies. So she gives the entire team speed bar and then also, of course, gives the entire team uh, offense up for two turns. She also gets 70% speed bar whenever she kills someone. So she's the person you always want to have landing the killing blow. So she can go on a tear and just kill uh, you know, opponents one after another after another. Okay, but this is an important ability because it, it works in conjunction with the number two ability on our list, which is going to be Daredevil's passive. Daredevil's passive is really important. If you look at it, he gains 10% speed for himself and for Shadowland allies. 
And then he also, in war, gains an additional 10% speed for himself and an additional 10% speed for Shadowland allies. Why is this important? Because it means basically several members on the team or potentially the entire team is going to take a turn before the enemy gets to move. So you can literally set up an opening move where Electra, who is going to be a skirmisher, marks a target and then White Tiger kills that target before they take a turn. Or at the very least, White Tiger, for example, can ability block a target and Electra can disrupt a target for two turns and just knock them out before the fight even starts. That's how this team works. You absolutely have to have the Daredevil passive. You absolutely have to have the White Tiger passive for this team to work. The other ability that you absolutely that the most important ability is going to be the white tiger special and what this does is it just gives a ton of piercing damage which is so important because piercing ignores enemies armor and so here she's attacking literally so she's attacking for 220 piercing on her primary attack and then three more attacks where she's attacking for 140 percent piercing it's just a devastating attack one of the most powerful moves in the game it also applies heal block for one turn disrupted for two turns and ability block for two turns in war like i said that's going to be amazing against doom so these are the only two necessary t4s for white tiger but she is an amazing character i recently put her i think 11th on my list of the best characters to invest in for the long term uh she's a, a, a an absolutely brutal damager uh who on this team is the key character to gear up and you'll see i geared her up to gear, gear tier 15 uh before any of the other characters and in fact i have some low characters here and this team's still performing well and punching up in war because she does almost all of the work okay after the, those speed abilities and that White Tiger special, it's time to turn to Night Nurse. And she's got three abilities that you're pretty much going to have to T4 to get this team off the ground. The, the, the first one that I'll talk about is, what, is her flip. And this is absolutely necessary because she starts with zero energy in this ability. Uh, if you don't T4 it, and it it starts ready to go as soon as you get the T4. It's just a massive upgrade. And what it does is it flips three negative effects on self and all Shadowland allies. So it's just a massive boost for the team, her flip, uh, kind of like a, a Thanos flip, so to speak. Uh, and then she heals all allies for 15% of her max health, which has gotten a lot bigger with the rework. She also adds a couple of regen to each ally. This is awesome. It, it works even, of course, in the Doom Raid on a mixed team because uh, that heal is so helpful on turn one. But flipping the negative effects in war in particular or on the full team uh, is just absolutely devastating move. And then you're also going to want to put the T4 uh, in her special and this ability may be misunderstood and is and, and this is a reason why I do not have a positioning guide uh, on this infographic so it says to heal it says clear three negative effects from the most injured ally and all adjacent allies so a lot of people read this to believe that you're talking about the two allies next to night nurse that's not the case it's actually the two allies adjacent to the most injured ally and so the positioning for this team really depends on the red stars you have on the team, um, the health of each character, the gear level of each character, and other factors. So it's really hard for me to give you a, a positioning recommendation. Uh, I've talked to other uh, players who have very large Shadowlands, and they've had the same experience. Um, but this clearing of negative effects is fantastic. It is a, the key move for Doom Raid. It's very helpful, obviously, uh, when you're running this team in war, uh, if the battle lasts that long. Um, and it's only a three-turn cooldown, so you're going to use it a lot. It also heals the most injured ally and all adjacent allies uh, for 20% of the character's max health. And then it'll call generally White Tiger. That's who you want it to call. You want to make sure she's the highest damage to attack the primary target. Okay, once we're done with Night Nurse, there's only two other abilities that are absolutely essential. And those are these two abilities on Moon Knight. So Moon Knight is going to have this move, which is going to do... Um, uh, apply a ton of different negative effects uh, to each enemy. So 50% chance to apply up to three ne additional negative effects uh, in addition to heal block for two turns to each enemy from that list. Uh, and then uh, and then he's going to clear all positive effects in war, which is just devastating to teams like Marauders and Black Order. And then it just does, also does a lot of damage. 
Uh, so this is an absolutely key move. It has a lot of extra focus. Uh, so fantastic, devastating move. It's kind of part of the opening combo. And typically the way this works is Electra is going to mark the target with um, a key target with, with uh, vulnerable. White Tiger is going to kill one target. And then uh, uh, Moon Knight's going to come in and just debuff everyone and potentially kill or hurt other enemies. And that's this really is important to get the initial combo going and cripple the enemy. The passive is also, I think, just too helpful not to have. And this is 20% health for Shadowlands allies. I think it's important because it really does... Uh, a, a lot of good for Night Nurse, whose healing is based on her max health. Uh, it also, I think, is really helpful for White Tiger, who can be kind of squishy if you really don't have her built up big. Okay, let's just talk about there's four abilities that are kind of nice to have, uh, but I don't think are essential at all. And the first one is going to be the Daredevil Special. Now, this is one I will just tell you, as I've talked to some players who've built up large Shadowlands and have used them extensively in war, um, there, there, there was one player in particular who did think that this ability was essential because he said, you're just leaving so much damage on the table without it. And here's what I would say. You know, this is an ability that does generate a lot of damage from all the counter because there's also a part of Moon Knight's kit that gives additional damage to, you know, if if the uh, character has counter. But I will just say that typically what I've seen is the fights are over early on. So this, I think, could enable bigger punch-ups. It could help in certain matchups. But I, do I think it's necessary to have a team that you run that's very successful? No, because I've had a lot of success without it. Uh, usually you just cripple the enemy. You kill the key enemy from the outset and you debuff the team and you start killing others and it just spirals out of control for the enemy and they can't recover even without this move. I mean, Daredevil ends up contributing very little. Uh, another, you know, I think ability that, you know, you could argue is, is fantastic, essential, whatever, is the White Tiger Ultimate, just because it's so much additional damage. It's 140% damage. Now, you may have heard... Uh, that this is, you know, like a super high uh, damage upgrade. That's not correct. Actually, the special is a bigger damage upgrade than this is, if you do the math. But this is also a great damage upgrade. And obviously, if she kills an enemy with it, then it's going to get her speed bar. So there's there's reason to do it. But to me, this is also kind of in the nice-to-have category. Uh, it also goes from clearing three negative effects to all. But, you know, by the time she's using this, she rarely has that many negative effects. So I view this also kind of in the nice to have category. I mean, once you build this team up and invest a lot of them, I think this is an ability you'll want to have T Ford, but, you know, it's not necessary to get the team off the ground. Now, there's a, a, a couple abilities that I think are a little controversial for me to leave off the list. And I know some people initially were thinking these were essential. I think it depends on the matchup. So one is the ultimate. Uh, the the first, uh, you know, the, the, this really, the first thing that it does that's really important is in war, instead of applying Disrupted for one turn, it applies Disrupted for two turns. Uh, that can be very important if you're taking on a massive Marauders, because obviously then having, you'll have Strife Disrupted for two turns instead of one. That'll give you time to uh, target Emma, who you're going to want to put Ability Block with White Tiger right away. And so really, whether you need this or not, in my view, depends on how large your Shadowlands is and how large the opposing Marauders is. So I think this enables much bigger punch-ups against the Marauders. Is it necessary? I don't think it's necessary to get the team running. Okay, it's just, a, I think, a very, very nice to have upgrade for the reason I just said. And then there's this passive, which is actually kind of controversial. So uh, as well, because I've had a lot of discussions about this, it's on spawn, apply, evade, and stealth to all adjacent Shadowland allies. This also affects positioning, because I think if you have this ability, T4, then you will want to have Night Nurse and White Tiger next to Electra, because this will help them survive, and they're really the two key characters on the team. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary at all because this team just comes out of the gate, has all that speed bar and cripples people. Down the line, when the game evolves, maybe if this team's weaker, you may need this team to have a lot more sustain. And at that point in time, maybe it's necessary. But at this stage of the game, this team can basically just go in, kill some enemies, even on a punch up, pretty easily as long as you've got a big white tiger. So I just don't view it's necessary at this point in time in the game's development. 
All right, now let's just talk uh, ISO classes for a minute. So the ISO classes on this team are very important. You absolutely need to have Electra as a skirmisher because she goes first. You want her to mark a target with vulnerable so that White Tiger gets an additional attack. Remember that White Tiger gets 70% speed bar if she kills the enemy. And so getting that additional ISO attack is important because that counts. If she kills the enemy on the ISO attack, then she, in fact, will still get the 70% speed bar. So these two are absolutely locked in. You obviously want Night Nurse as a healer. That's basically all she does. And by the way, I didn't mention you absolutely have to have her, her passive T Ford as well. And this, this is actually one of the most OP abilities in the game. I actually had a RTA match where Night Nurse beat a G14 uh, six red star Dark Phoenix one on one when she was only G13. And a large part of it was be with this ability, which is when this character or any Shadowland ally drops below 50% max health, apply defense up to that character, or in this case, when it was one on one her, and fill this character's speed bar by 30%. It is ridiculous. Gives her so much speed bar. So to me, she's just she's a massive healer on the team. She, you're going to want her healer ISO on her. You're going to want her to be healing like crazy, not only with these two moves, but she's got a passive heal. She'll be doing sort of a, a, the heal from the ISO as well. And then, you know, on war, she's also going to be healing the most injured ally on turn as well. So just tons and tons of healing from that character. And then you're going to want Raider on Moonlight and Moon Knight and Daredevil who have AoE attacks and have some things in their kit that, that help you when you crit. All right. Let's just talk very briefly about gear priority. So as I have listed on the infographic, you know, I have listed the gear priority uh, as uh, White Tiger, Night Nurse, Moon Knight, Daredevil, and Elektra. That really doesn't even, I think, begin to show the, the stark difference between them. I mean, I just, so you see, White Tiger, I have G15. I actually was winning in, in uh, war with her with a G15 White Tiger and everyone else at G12 or G13. Uh, because she can just come out of the gate and uh, annihilate the enemy. So if you attack a, an enemy that isn't fast to get going, you could get by with a huge white tiger and small uh, other characters. She's by far the most important to have huge. Night Nurse, though, is, the, is number two. It's a distant number two, but a number two because you want her health pool to be large for heals, and there are some fights that really can go the wrong way quickly, and with all of her healing, she can give you more sustain than anybody. I mean, I've had Dark Phoenix ult, and you know, Night Nurse helps the team shrug, shrug that off completely with her defense up and her healing. After that, I think Moon Knight is great for that initial AoE ability that hits everyone in particular. He does some decent damage, but these three really aren't the damagers of the team. If you're trying to punch up large or perhaps down the line, if you're watching this video months after its release in March of 2021, uh, you may need Daredevil because he's a, a good secondary damager uh, and you know he, his additional damage could potentially help put the team over the top on a big punch up. Electra is really, in my mind, not that important. She needs to be a skirmisher so that she, you know, particular on level five, she gets focused to make sure she lands uh, her initial attack. But other than that, uh, I don't really see her contributing a heck of a lot uh, to the team. She's more of a character who applies vulnerable, applies disrupted. So as for this team, why is it important? As I've said before, I think everybody should be building up this team. It's a very free-to-play friendly team because you, you, know, you can get Night Nurse, Electra, and Daredevil very easily. And Moon Knight is being released via an event, so everyone can get Moon Knight to four stars or potentially five. And same thing with White Tiger, who was a campaign character, uh, one of the uh, campaign releases. So this is a team that everyone should have access to. It's extraordinarily powerful, and it can just decimate certain teams in war, particularly teams that take a little bit of time to get going, teams that rely on positive effects, teams like the Marauders, Black Order potentially, uh, you know, in the right situation. But more importantly, with the White Tiger ability block, you can take out Doom. All right, so if you like this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and look below and subscribe to my uh, Twitch stream or, or follow my Twitch stream and go to our Discord where we have conversations about this stuff all the time. You'll also find my War Offense tier list and other uh, resources on that Discord as well.